Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Talking Bullion. I've got another interesting topic to talk about, and this time it's going to be how rare is silver and gold? Now, the first thing that comes to mind when I say that is whoever said silver and gold was rare? I mean, that's true. Nobody really builds it, nobody sells it, nobody pushes it, or at least not most people, as being rare. Okay, I get that. But on the other hand, we're talking about precious metals. And the term precious to me implies that there's some value, like there's some reason to have it. Like uh, you have to love it and hold it and caress it. It's precious, right? <laughs> That's what precious metals is, right? So if we look at the definition from the American Heritage Dictionary, the definition of precious is of high cost or worth, valuable, highly esteemed, cherished, dear, beloved. So I think that, you know, precious metals are indeed precious. But I've been thinking and I've been wondering just how precious or how rare they are. I mean, in my mind, the value of them comes from their rarity or their not being so common, maybe would be a better way to say it. But as I've looked around, as I've done some research, as I've gone through a few videos, I can tell you that it looks like there's a lot of silver and gold around. I mean, a lot of it. A little bit later, I'm going to show a couple of quick little video clips from one of my favorite YouTubers, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But in the meantime, let's talk about a few of these things that make us desire and want silver and gold and where it kind of is on the spectrum of availability, how common it is, or how rare it is. All right, sound good? So why don't we go ahead and take a look. Right, before we get started on some of the details, I wanted to bring forth some of silver and gold here. Just a little sample of some of the stuff out there and a little bit of eye candy, a little bit of uh, special things. One of the things I really like about what's on the table here is this right here. I love these USS Constitution rounds. Honest value never fails. And this one is really, really important to me. This is the first round that I made my first YouTube video with. And I was just so impressed with this thing. In fact, I was a little bit younger in my YouTube years and I actually called it a coin instead of a round. But if you go back in my videos on YouTube and look, you'll see this is the first one that I ever did a video on. And it's really cool, you know, the camera doesn't catch it, but I really liked it because the toning on it makes it look like there's a storm around the ship and it's got some really great toning on it now the ones that i prefer there's a couple different ones out there at the top you'll see up here it says constitution mint and i like the constitution mint ones i do not like the liberty mint the liberty mint has copied these and put them out so if you have dates in the 80s or so this will be the liberty mint but i like the constitution mint and i believe you can see here there's a 73 and a 74 those are the only two years i believe that the constitution mint minted these rounds and one of the things i really like on this round is the back of it so we're going to try to zoom in a little bit i'll just bring it closer to the camera and what it says there in cursive it's going to be hard, kind of hard to read it says no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin, a tender in payments of debt. Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution. I mean, I just love that because we all know that paper money really has no value. There's nothing back in it. And when our founding fathers, you know, built this country, started this country, they had no intention of paper money being our currency. They wanted it to be silver and gold. And indeed, it was silver and gold for a long, long time. So yeah, this, this round is very special to me. And I just love these uh, 
U.S. US Constitution. I was on. Now, Constitution Mint also has bars. I've got a couple of 10-ounce bars from the same company that's been out of business for a long time. And so I've got several other things maybe we'll talk about here in a bit. Got some gold out. I got a 2008 Buffalo, U.S. Buffalo, 24 karat pure gold. Still in the original packaging. Got the uh, C of A with it. Got the uh, outer box with it. So this, this is a nice one. Uh, this is really cool. And, um, and some other stuff here. A $1 gold coin. And uh, just some other silver that we'll talk about here in a little bit. But let's get into a little bit of some of the discussion that I wanted to talk about. So let's start with silver first, okay? So silver is used a lot. It's not only used for precious metals, for coinage and bars and things like that. It's used in industry. It's used in medical field. It's used for jewelry. A lot, a lot of it's used for jewelry. It's just used a lot. So that means there must be a lot, right? Now, I think that that's a, a pretty good thing about silver is that it is used a lot in other things besides just coins and bars and rounds, collector stuff. The fact that it has other uses, I think, makes it much more valuable and necessary to have. And, of course, I don't want anybody taking my uh, 10-ounce Prospector bar. <laughs> this thing is a chunk, man. Got to be careful not to drop it on my gold coins. Uh, this thing is hefty and heavy. But I would hate to have this melted down to be used for some industrial purpose. But it's definitely uh, it's definitely used a lot for a lot of different things. And so I think that's, that's, a, that's a good thing, right? So I'm going to pull up this chart here from the Silver Institute. I pulled this off the internet. And it's about silver supply and demand. And if we take a look at this, you can see all the different demands for silver. Uh, it's got the 2021 on there and the 2022 forecasted. You can see here it's got total industrial, electrical, and electronics, uh, brazen alloys, pho photography. Now, photography used to be a big user of silver not that long ago, but, but obviously with most photos being digital now, not so much, but it's still used. Then we can see jewelry, silverware, uh, bars and coin demand, and net hedging demand, which I'm not really sure what that is at this point. But you can see here, there's there's quite a bit of silver being used. And over the years, if this chart starts on 2012, it uh, has actually, you know, bounced up there pretty good, 2014, 2015. And starting in 2016, started going back down again until 2021, uh, bounced back up there again. Pandemic related, you know, maybe, maybe people are buying more. But as you can see on this chart, that silver is definitely a useful precious metal and will continue I would think they have value because of that and I've heard that they obviously make it use it for electronic cars although I think copper is used more for that and they use it for rockets and bombs and all kinds of different things so uh, silver is gonna gonna be around and be in, be in high demand but the thing is how much is available and and how easy is it for them to mine it and get it and that's just something to, to consider when you're looking at the value of a precious metal. So I thought this chart was good. I thought it, it really showed the value and the usage of silver. So like with the dollar, I think that silver, you know, has its value because people value it, right? As soon as people lose faith in the dollar, the dollar becomes worth nothing. Same is true with precious metals to a degree, right? I think what I just showed with all the other uses for silver but I think even if we lost value in it as a precious metal, there would still be value for all the other uses that are out there for it. So let's take a look at a few other things. Take a quick break from, from the research. And how about these? Huh? These are called the American Landscape. Is it called the American Landscape? Landmarks. American Landmarks. And these are two ounces. I don't own a whole lot of two ounces, but these are cool. This one is Pearl Harbor. Now there's four of these. I've got another one down here for the Grand Canyon, but uh, there's four of these and I only have three of them and I can't remember what the fourth one is, but if anybody knows, sees these for sale online or anything, let me know because I'd really like to pick up that fourth one because like I said, these are some, some two ounce chunkers. These are pretty cool. I know that um, Atmex or JM Bullion was selling them a while back. But they didn't have the one that I needed. 
and then something like this is really cool too now I you know, I'm pr pretty much a stacker but I like to get some cool things too and this right here 75th anniversary of coke I picked this up recently for a really good price I bought this also for a gift for somebody in the family and got this for quite a bit cheaper than, than what I paid for it then now it's kind of hard to see but it's got stamping on the edge if you take it out of the case you can see it so this is serialized and the stamping as far as 999 and one ounce is on the side but isn't that cool this side's got a nice uh, nice bottle of coke on there so yeah we like to have some fun with our collecting too and so i got some good good collectible stuff here i'll show off a few other things here in a couple minutes so how much silver and gold is out there well here's an article from sd bullion and I, I just snipped this out of a, a pretty big article that was on their website. So if you want some more information, you can go out to SD Bullion and look it up and take a look. But I thought this was the important part. So SD Bullion claims that, and this article is from June 30th of 2019, so it's a few years old. And they say that combined geological, aggregate mining data, and verifiable historical records from the World Gold Council show that about 190,000 metric tons of gold and some 1.6 million tons of silver have been mined physically throughout history from the Earth's crust. I mean, if you look at the difference between gold and silver there, that's uh, that's quite a bit different, right? That's uh, quite a bit less gold than, than silver. Currently, we mine about eight parts of silver to one part of gold ore globally. In other words, for each metric ton of gold production, there are eight metric tons of silver. As of November of 2021, the gold to silver ratio has been fluctuating between 75 and 80. It reached an all time high of 122 in the outburst of the quarantine in March of 2020. Yeah, we know about that gold to silver ratio, don't we? Well, most of us do, and we keep an eye on it. That doesn't drive my gold and silver buying like it does for a lot of people. But I definitely keep an eye on it. When I when it dropped down to 65, I traded some silver for some gold. And it actually worked out really well. But generally speaking, the gold to silver ratio doesn't impact my buy-in too much. Alright, so reading this article, one of the things that came to mind for me was, you know, 190,000 metric tons of gold and 1.6 million tons of silver. Well, what's a ton? I wanted to know how much a ton was. So I went out and I did some looking for that to see how much a metric ton would be. All right, so here's an article I pulled off of the internet that I thought was interesting and I think it helps us understand how to convert a metric ton to troy ounces and that's kind of what I was wondering. So in this article called How Many Ounces Are in a Ton of Gold Bullion, it says for 999 fine physical gold bullion, or other precious metals like silver bullion, for instance, a metric ton is exactly 32,150.7 troy ounces of gold or other precious metal. When referring to precious physical metals, a ton refers to a metric ton. The British ton, i.e. T-O-N-N-E -N -N -E, with the British spelling, is the metric ton of gold we use in the precious metals industry, a metric ton is 2,240 pounds in total. So now we know what a ton of gold is. And going back to those numbers, you can see that's quite a few troy ounces, right? So now we know how much has been mined, and that's pretty cool. Those are some great numbers. Why don't we take a look at some other data, which really kind of surprises me. These, these numbers are, are pretty high, so let's take a look. So I follow this guy on Twitter. I'm not really sure how. I must have signed up for him a long time ago because I really don't hang out on Twitter at all. But I get an email once in a while when this guy posts a new chart. His name is Mike Say 98 on Twitter. So I give him all the credit for this. So what he does is he charts at max sales. And I find this very interesting for a couple different reasons. So this is from May 13th. And I'll pull up another one from just a few days ago, but May 13th, this is at max sales, right? So you can see on the, the graph here, the blue is yesterday, green is last Friday, orange is today, 
and then the dot 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 is an average Friday okay so what he's showing here is that we've got some pretty high sales I mean this is this is just Atmex folks this is not including any of these other bullion dealers the US Mint uh, all the you know Scottsdale's and Geiger's and all these people this is just Atmex sales all right if we look at yesterday up here in the top left almost 90,000 ounces of silver was sold just by Atmex a seven day total over 425,000 so just short of what half a million a 30 day total is 1.7 million ounces and in 2022 Atmex alone has sold over 7 million ounces of silver I mean I just find those numbers just staggering now what I don't know I kind of assume Atmex is just a consumer like me buying them I'm not sure if they sell to industry I'm not sure if they sell for medical reasons uh, you know just for all those other uses we talked about maybe they do but I just kind of always assumed they were just an online bullion dealer where people bought from them you can see here down in the green the sold percentage on this chart was hundred and twenty percent more than the average and yesterday was hundred and thirty nine percent so there is a there is some serious serious sales going on at Atmax and what really amazes me is that this is only one place out of all the different resources now as long as we're here let's go ahead and take a look at the gold and again the orange line is today the blue line is yesterday and the green line is last Friday of course there's not going to be as many ounces but as we know gold's quite a bit more expensive than than silver is but look at this just yesterday alone this would have been uh, you know May May 12th because this starts on May 13th over 2,000 ounces of gold sold over 12,000 ounces in seven days a 30-day total of over 53,000 ounces and in 2022 they've sold almost a quarter million ounces of gold just that max I, mean, I just I just find those numbers staggering and again we can see the numbers down at the bottom in the green about the sold percentage of daily and yesterday which you know at this time was was more so wow who would have thought that Atmex was selling that much silver and gold. That is just that is just incredible numbers. All right, so let's pull up another one. This one's from May 18th, and we can see here the numbers are are down a little bit from May 13th as far as how many were sold the previous day. So it wasn't quite as good a day as as May May 13th was. But still, I mean, we're still talking about some serious, serious silver and gold being sold at Atmex. So I found that very interesting that uh, Atmex has got that kind of sell through. I guess there's, you know, they're one of the most expensive online bullion dealers for us consumers to, to shop at. And I think that uh, we can see now why, <laughs> why they're not lowering their prices because they are selling. All right, so before I go on to my next uh, little bit of data I have for you, we take a look at a little bit more of the stuff we have here on the table. Here's one of those classic Ingohard uh, silver rounds. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Ingohard was the first company to put out silver rounds. They were the very first company to do that. So that's pretty cool, huh? It would have been back here in the early 80s. This one is a... Uh, was it an 84 or an 85? This was an 84. And uh, I think the first year was 82. Then I picked this up. I no guarantee I didn't pay $35 for it. But I picked up this quarter ounce. 1985 hard. You don't see these around. I think 85 was the only year they had fractionals. But yeah, these are uh, these are pretty cool too, huh? Quarter ounce hard. And I just kept it in the flip that I bought it in. So yeah, I thought that was cool. And then how about these Sunshine Mint rounds, huh? Sunshine Minting, which the, they make the planchets for the uh, American Silver Eagle. But they, they used to put the years on these too. See, this is 1984 as well. One Troy ounce. I really like these vintage. I collect these vintage uh, Sunshine Minting rounds. If I can get them for a good price, I don't want to overpay for them. 
but I think these are cool. I really like these. And these are equivalent to the modern day Sunshine Minting Rounds. Take a look at these. These are really, really nice. And they have the security feature on the back of these. They got a decoder thing you can put over the top. And I don't remember what it says. I think it says valid or SMI or something there. But there's a, a card you can put over there. And so these are the, the common or the more recent versions of these. And I also have a uh, half ounce, half ounce sunshine minting round. I think these are pretty cool too. See here, half tri ounce. They also have the security feature on them. So yeah, those those are really cool rounds rounds to collect. All right, so some some pretty nice stuff here. I'd like to talk about the U.S. Mint and how many sales they have going on. All right, on here you can see there's silver totals and gold totals. Gold's on the left, silver's on the right. We'll talk about gold here in a few minutes. I'm still trying to stick to silver. You can see down here at the very bottom, this is from 2021, 28 million ounces of silver just on the Eagles came from the Mint. Now the Mint, as you know, makes other silver items besides just the Eagle. So silver in total was more than 28 million. So we looked at Atmax. Now we're looking at the U.S. Mint. I mean, just between these two right here, we're talking about millions of ounces of silver. Why does that bother me a little bit? Because I'm, I'm just I'm just not sure how precious it really is when year after year they're pounding out millions and millions and millions of ounces. Now does it have value? Of course it does, otherwise there wouldn't be all this stuff laying on the table, right? But again, if people lose faith in it or the manipulation, I don't know, it's just that, you know, years ago when I started buying it, I really thought this stuff was much more valuable because of its availability, I guess. And as we can see, <laughs> it's pretty available. All right, so yeah, the US Mint is definitely pumping out some silver too. All right, so that's kind of my thoughts on silver. Silver is high in demand, well-respected metal, been used for currency for thousands of years, and it's good stuff. It's a good stackable item. You can easily afford it. Buy an ounce a month before you know it, your drawer will be a little bit heavier to open, and it's a good thing to stack. But we'll go through some pros and cons at the end. But I just wanted to review some of the things I found about silver and my thoughts on it. And before we move on to gold, let me show you one of my favorite fun things that I bought. And this is my Three Stooges round I have over here in the coin cam. So why don't we uh, blow that up for a minute. And take a look at this cool little round. Oh, look at that. The Three Stooges. Now, many of you watching this video might not know who the Three Stooges are. And if you do, you might not have ever watched them. But the Three Stooges were classic, classic comedy back a long time ago. I bought this round at a coin show. Thought it was pretty cool. It was several years ago now. I don't remember what I paid for it. It wasn't more than the other round. But when I got home and I looked it up on eBay, I realized I got it for a really good deal because this thing was selling for some pretty good cash. But I bought it just to kind of have as a as a collector item. I mean, just because it was cool. The back is nothing fancy. Usually when you see these clean backs like that, they're kind of intended to maybe engrave something on them to buy them and put, you know, um, congratulations or happy anniversary or something like that on the back. What do you think about that, huh? Is, <laughs> is that a cool round or what? All right, so let's do a little talking about some gold. So as we saw with the numbers that we demonstrated earlier, there's not as much gold, there's not near as much gold that has been mined as there has been silver. So gold has always been highly valued. You think about the kings and queens from times past, you see all the movies and Everything's lined with gold. Their palaces are all made out of gold. Gold has been a valued, valued precious metal for thousands of years. And as we demonstrated, there's a lot less of it. As you can see here, I've got a $10 half ounce. They're not quite a half ounce. Uh, Liberty Head. This is a $18.95. Is this thing cool or what? Uh, I'm glad I bought a few of these back when you could afford them. These things are so expensive now. A $10 coin. 
So yeah, folks, back in the day, if you wanted to pay $10 for something, this is what you pulled out and paid with. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And we got the modern day, you know, American Eagle. This is a half ounce. Can't, can't tell. The lighting's bouncing off. I can't really tell what the year is on it, but that's not really important. The classic back from the original Type 1, as they call it now. American Gold Eagle. Then we have a 10th ouncer. That tiny little guy. But I'll tell you, I'll take them. I'll take the 10th ouncers. They may be small, but they're still gold. And over here I got a couple quarter ouncers. Just for demonstration purposes. That's the, uh, the newest one, the Type 2, right? The new uh, Eagle head on there. I don't like this design much at all, but anyway, that's pretty cool. And then here's something that comes out of Colorado. This is the uh, Prospector's Golden Gems rounds that they put out. Tenth ounce. These are four nines fine. Again, out of the uh, out of the mountains of Colorado. So this is pretty cool. Got that nice uh, eagle on them. I've done a few videos on these, so if you want to know more, go ahead and uh, do a search on my YouTube channel and you'll find uh, you know, a couple unboxings, a little bit of conversation about them. And then finally we have the uh, 1853 uh, $1 coin. This thing is small. I, I left it in the container. This is how I bought it from a coin show. I just left it in here, but uh, this thing, if we compare it even to a tenth ouncer, Look at it, it's, it's definitely smaller. So I don't know how they kept this stuff uh, in their pockets back in the day without losing them. Okay, so there's a little bit of a bling bling on the gold side. All right, so why don't we go ahead now and take a look at some interesting information about the historical demand and supply for gold. So I've got this website pulled up here. It's from the World Gold Council. And they've got some pretty cool charts on here, and I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at them. So, if we come down here and take a look, we've got a supply and demand chart. This is from 2010 to 2022. So you can see here, they go down here in the years, how much supply was provided. And we got, you know, 1.25 over here. So we can rest on it and see mine production, 752 tons so we've got the uh the purple representing mine production the green recycled a little bit of red in there we can turn these off like if we turn the green purple then it shows the red uh so it's kind of interesting to see how much supply there was but let's look at the demand tab because i thought this was pretty interesting so actually if we go to annual it gives it a little bit cleans it up a little bit. So you can see here it starts at 2010, goes to 2021. The purple is jewelry fabrication. The maroon is technology. The green is investment. Central banks. And the gold line running through it is the LBMA gold price, US dollars per ounce. So I thought this was pretty interesting. If we look throughout the years, the biggest demand almost every year is for jewelry. Now, is that surprising? I don't think it is. I think that jewelry is pretty well how most people own their gold. I like gold jewelry. Most people do. But the demand for gold is really mostly for jewelry. And then we look at green as investment. Now, I would assume that uh, investment is where the you know coins and bullion comes from with this chart. And then, you know, there's a decent amount in there for technology, too. But, yeah, look at uh, look, look at this chart and, and how much is used in each industry. I thought that was pretty interesting to find out how much jewelry dominates the demand. So, pretty cool, huh? All right, so while we were talking about jewelry, let's go back to our main page here. And I'm going to run a couple videos from International Stacker. 
he's a great YouTuber. If you're not following him, you should be, because uh, he truly is an international stacker. He travels the world for his job. I think he hasn't been doing a lot of international lately, but, uh, you know, he came onto the YouTube scene and provided some very interesting stuff. Live streams from Egypt, things like that. I wanted to show you uh, a clip or two when he was doing some of his international travel and just to take a look at the availability of gold in some of these other countries. So we'll go ahead and run one clip now and check it out. Pure gold special offer. See guys, we got some beautiful jewelry here. This type of jewelry, jewelry is really popular in India for weddings. So all oh, this crazy 24 karat, we got a way to weigh all this out. Look at all this cool stuff. We got some more jewelry. This is 22 karat, 49 a gram. It's all kinds of stuff. That guys. Wow. That's a lot of gold. Okay. These are like the bangles, it's super popular in India. Alright, so I think we get it right. I think that uh, gold is pretty available. It's not rare. It's uh, If you want it, you can buy it in a lot of different places. I mean, I just showed videos internationally, but you know, here in the U.S., just about every, every corner in any big city has a jewelry store on it. Even small towns have jewelry stores. Gold, silver is definitely available to us. So what was my point here? My point was, even though it's a precious metal, it's a common precious metal. And I'm okay with that, but I do realize that it's maybe not what I thought it was back when I first got into this. But it's still good stuff. Alright, so let's go through some pros and cons. So silver can protect your wealth. So for example, back in the 60s, when a 9% quarter was our regular money, our regular currency, you could buy a gallon of gas. Nowadays, especially with where inflation's at right now, it'll still get you a gallon of gas. So that's good. That's protecting your wealth. Silver can be used in a SHTF situation. For those who don't know what SHTF is, that's when crap hits the fan, right? You can take your fractional silver, your junk silver, your 90% silver, your you know smaller pieces like this. You can use them for uh, you know for bartering, for buying things. And if you have a big purchase, you can take this big bar and use it, pick it up. But um, silver, silver is going to be good for that as well if it ever becomes necessary. And let's be honest here too. It's shiny and, and pretty. I mean, who doesn't like a beautiful kookaburra to hang on to and check out and just uh, have? It's fun. It's fun to have this stuff. It's also, you know savings account. I don't look at it as an investment. I look at it as a savings account. This is a way to save money, right? If you didn't have this, what else would you spend this 30 bucks on? You know, who knows, a dinner out or something instead of, you know, putting it into your savings account. And also another thing I like about silver is it's from God. It came from this earth, manufactured from the one above, and I really like that. That gives me comfort knowing that it's not man-made, it's God made and I really think that's pretty cool. Some of the cons of silver, it's not your best investment. If you're buying this stuff as an investment to try to make 10, 12, 20%, you're probably not buying it for the right reason. Now, could it make you 10 or 12%? It certainly could. Uh, timing would be everything, right? But if you want to earn some big bucks, some, there, there's other investments out there to do that with. The, the, the intent here is not really as an investment. It can be, but that's not why I buy it. And it's also very heavy and takes up a lot of space. So you know that the same amount, if you, had, <laughs> if you had the same value in gold, it'd be about, uh, you know, one of these, a little bit more than one of these right now. So look at the difference in size, right? So if you're going to stack a bunch of silver, you're going to need to have a very strong back and a big container because it's heavy. And it takes up a lot of space, but doesn't mean it's not an important part of a stack. So I would encourage you to, to pick some up and have it. 
but just be aware there are some cons as well. Now as far as the pros for gold, there's some pretty good pros for gold as well. It's a great precious metal to hold. It has some incredible value. It's so well respected around the world. It's also another way to protect your wealth. So for example, the $20 gold coin, the double eagle, I don't have mine out right now. $20 gold eagle back in the, you know, 1910, 1920, whenever it would have been, would have bought you a very nice suit. And now today, that same $20 gold ego, if you had one in your possession, and you, uh, the value that it would be in dollars would get you a very nice suit as well. So that's, that's just protecting your wealth. If you had a $20 bill back then and paper, you know, that $20 bill today would not buy you much. And as I mentioned earlier, another pro of gold is it doesn't take as much space. It takes very little space. The value here... The same value in silver would be quite a bit of silver out. So you can take $50,000 worth of gold, which I don't have here. That's for sure. I'm not implying that. I'm saying you could take a handful of gold, have $50,000, you could put it in your pocket, and you could go. If you were to try to put $50,000 worth of silver in your pocket, I have to tell you, <laughs> it wouldn't fit, and you better have a pretty strong belt. That's all I'm saying. As I mentioned earlier, I still support silver, but gold is definitely a great precious metal to stack, and you can take a lot with you very quickly. And gold can also be used for bartering. I think silver fits that need a little bit better, but you can barter with you could barter with with gold as well. Maybe you're gonna buy a car or something that you know would take a lot of silver. You know, get a couple gold coins out, whatever it might be, you're good to go. So. Bartering, you know, with gold is, is, is there, but but I still think silver probably better fits that need. The cans, let's talk about the cans of gold. Gold costs a lot of money, right? It's hard for people to be able to afford gold coins, and that's why the 10 ounces are, you know, so popular, is because it's a lot easier to afford one of these than it is to afford one of these. And so... Um, it's 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 an expensive thing to buy. It's a great thing to buy. This gold buffalo still in the original government packaging. Uh, and is that beautiful or what? 24 karat gold. Pure gold. But I haven't taken it out and put it into its little case or anything. I'm leaving it packaged up, airtight sealed. So yeah, so can of gold is that it's expensive. And like silver, it's not really going to gain as much in investments as other things would. So if you're buying this as an investment, could you make some money off it? Of course you could. And there's a lot of coin dealers that do. But as far as like using it instead of a 401k to get your 10 or 12% every year till you retire, uh, probably not the best thing to do. But it's just my humble opinion. And other than that, honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot of cons to owning gold. Gold's a great precious metal to hold. And also, there's not a whole lot of cons to owning silver either. I mean, I would, I would, you know, say they're both good to have. So what does this all mean? Let's do a quick little summary here. Well, first of all, I want to just say I'm no financial advisor. This is all just my opinion, just some dude on YouTube. And in my humble opinion, I would stack as much as you can. I would start in today's economic times and everything's so messed up like it is. I would say you should probably be stacking something. Get some of this in your safe, some of this in your sock drawer, because this stuff is uh, is could become necessary, could become very useful with all the things going on. We didn't look at this uh, Johnson Matthew, did we? So yeah, I would highly recommend picking up some of this great precious metal for your future and there's some options out there where you can buy paper versions of it you can buy it and they store it in a safe for you I would say again just my opinion do not let somebody else hold your value you know people say if you don't hold it you don't own it every piece of precious metal that you have money into should be in your possession you know when the pandemic broke out banks were closed you couldn't get into them. You couldn't get into your safe deposit boxes. You need to be holding it. It needs to be right there, right in your hand, so you know when you need it, it's in your possession immediately. 
You don't have to have it shipped to you. You don't have to try to get into a bank on the weekend when they're closed. You just have it when you need it. And again, I know it can be, you know, difficult sometimes, especially with, with how costly everything is today. But my philosophy I use in buying precious metals is this. I call it drip, drip, drip. That's right. We drip a little bit at a time, all the time. So I might just buy an ounce today. I might buy two ounces next week. You know, I might even buy a 10 ounce bar sometime during the month. Have that on hand. And then next month I might buy a, you know, quarter ounce eagle if I can afford it. Let's get that thing. There we go. Ooh. Look at that cartwheel on that. Oops, sorry, it got stuck on the shiny. And I just, you know, you don't you don't try to go out and buy all this at once. It's that's a frustrating endeavor. And I mean if you can afford to, great. But you have to understand that just getting a little bit now, a little bit later, a little bit later is a great thing and, and it starts adding up. So drip, 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 drip it in. Drip an ounce now, drip a quarter ounce then, drip this, drip that. I mean you'd be surprised how quick it adds up. And you'll be surprised too that once you start, you know, getting this stuff, how much you want to get more and how it becomes your new savings account. It's really pretty cool. Now, do I recommend that you have every spare penny you have in precious metals? No, I think you have to have the balance, right? Cash is still king. Make sure you have some cash, but buy some of this as well. It'll do you well in the future for sure. And if we never have a situation where you know, this stuff explodes or, you know, crap hits the fan and you have to get out of Dodge, whatever. You know, you're going to leave this to somebody that's going to be very happy that you collected it. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I know I enjoyed getting all this stuff out, being able to look through some of my stack again. And uh, being able to, you know, handle it and, and uh, enjoy seeing it and touching it. And, you know, this stuff is cool. And it's been fun. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and always remember, let's keep talking boyan.